All right, so in the second category of experience, uh, as we continue to explore the four categories, uh, we're gonna open now to um, what I'm calling here charge. Um, I think another term that's kind of related that I, that I also like and sometimes use is valence. And both charge and valence are, are kind of referring back to, or kind of are inspired by um, physics and atomic theory in particular. Um, because uh, when we look at uh, atoms, we look at subatomic particles, the particles that make up atoms, um, then we see these three special kinds of particles, the protons, neutrons, and electrons. And these, of course, uh, are defined primarily in terms of their charge, their electromagnetic charge. So uh, protons, of course, are positive, neutrons are negative, and, uh, sorry, electrons are negative, and neutrons are neither. They have a neutral charge. And in, the, in, in a really similar way, when we're looking at our experience and particularly seeing the physical component of experience, because charge seems to be most easy to detect, uh, so far as I can tell, without getting into the kind of physical quag quagmire of like, what is charge and what is, is, it, is it tied to only to the body? Is it mental? Is it, you know, there's a lot of, there's, still, there's a lot of stuff we could explore there, but I don't know that it's so practically helpful. What I found very practical is to sort of look at the bodily sensation component of whatever you're noting. And sometimes you'll notice that it has a charge, that there is this clear, pleasant, unpleasant, or neither quality to the experience. And this seems to be largely baked in to the experience. It's part of our physicality. Um, I remember reading about what's called, uh, there's a model in neurobiology called the triune brain that this three-part brain system that has evolved over time in, in, in uh, human organisms, and that it really evolved over the course of the evolution of life on this planet. And you have these kind of three major parts of the brain. The, the most recent one, the neocortex, um, is the one that we kind of, kind of most associate with our human experience. But the first brain is actually called um, the reptilian brain stem. And this includes the kind of brainstem, the amygdala. These are very old and ancient parts of our nervous system. And they've evolved very early on in the history of evolution, the life on this planet. And, and in a way, you could sort of look at the reptile or the alligator as a good example of, 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 of what we're talking about here. And, and, and this, I think, really helps to highlight charge. Because um, if we look at an alligator, you know, and I've seen some alligators in Florida, uh, if you look at reptiles, you know, there's a sense in which looking at them and, and, and empathizing with them, it's hard to get a sense that there's like a huge emotional life going on there, like that they're having the same kind of worries and fears and, you know, um, uh, emotional states that we are. And it doesn't seem like there's a lot happening in terms of like um, high level abstraction and cognition. I mean, of course, that makes sense. The brains are like, you know, pretty small. Um, but they're very sensitive to their environments and, and they're very uh, clued in to when something happens. And you can sort of see this in kind of the, the, the sense of the, 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 the sensation with an alligator and then there's this kind of immediate like snapping toward or snapping away. Um, and, 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 and so the triune brain system is very much clued into this this baked in quality of experience of the charge. Is it pleasant? Is it unpleasant? Is it neutral? And I think, you know, looking at it from an evolutionary biological perspective is interesting because it's like, oh, of course, as living organisms, we need this capacity to very quickly, without having to use all this sort of thinking power, to very quickly notice the sensations that we're experiencing. Are they pleasant? Are they unpleasant? Are they neutral? If they're unpleasant, we might want to get away from them. If they're pleasant, we might want to go toward them. If they're neutral, we might want to just ignore them. So you could, in a way, say that from the Buddhist perspective, being a living being and, and, and these natural tendencies that keep us alive are also the root of our existential suffering. Uh, and so it's good to notice what it's like to, to experience this charged, uh, this pleasant, unpleasant, neutral, this valence quality of our physical experience because then we don't have to necessarily be so immediately run by this, this charge. We can become aware of the charge and, and, and sit with the charge, not necessarily act out this sort of evolutionarily habitual response 
we're working against the stream of our own evolutionary conditioning with this practice.